Good evening, boys and girls. Welcome to Lesson 8.5, our final lesson in our division chapter, Interpret Division with Fractions. Our essential question for tonight is how can you use diagrams, equations, and story problems to represent division? Go ahead and turn in your Go Math book to Lesson 8.5 and let's begin. For number one, it says, Daniel has a piece of wire that is one half of a yard long. He cuts the wire into three equal pieces. What fraction of a yard is each piece? Now my directions say that I need to write an equation to represent the problem and then solve. So this one is done for you. It says one half, which is how long his yard is, and we're going to divide it into three parts because it says he cuts the wire into three equal pieces. And equal is my cube to divide. Now, it's written up as an equation, like the question asks, by saying 1 half divided by 3 equals n. n is our unknown number that we're trying to find. So you can do it a couple different ways. You can draw a model to figure it out, or you can use multiplication to figure it out. In this example, we did multiplication. Because if you had one half of a yard, and you're going to cut it into thirds, you want to know what is one third of a half to find out how long each piece is. Therefore, you can use multiplication. So to find one half times one third, you would just say, multiply your numerators and you would get one. Multiply your denominator, you'd get six. So the final answer would be one sixth of a yard long. To show an example of a model of a fraction divided by the whole number, I could create one half. So I went ahead and created one half. We're going to divide it into three parts. So therefore we have this one half cut into three parts, which is thirds, and then what would be the value of one of those parts? And I can just shade in one of those parts, and that one part, of course, as you can see, does show one-sixth of a yard. For number two, it says, Vita has a piece of ribbon that is five meters long. She cuts the ribbon into pieces that are each one-third of a meter long. How many pieces does she cut? Well, I know that this would have to be a division problem because we start with our whole number, which is 5. Cut is my clue word that we're putting it into parts because it also says into pieces, and we also say each is a third meter long. Therefore, my equation should be 5 divided into one-third parts equals n. Now, n will actually tell me how many one-third parts that we have. Now remember, we learned back in our previous lessons that whenever you divide a whole number by a fraction, you're going to get a larger whole number because we're finding how many smaller pieces that we have compared to the five larger pieces. So you're going to have more. So we have five divided by one-third equals n. That would be our equation. And now we can solve it. I want to choose to draw a number line to solve it. So I'm going to make a number line, and you can do this somewhere on your page with me if you'd like. Let's put a 0 and a 5 on each end. And the reason why I chose 5 is because that's our whole number. I'm going to stagger, putting my whole number values, and I'm estimating them to be about that long. Now let's take a look at my divisor. My divisor is 1 third. Therefore, I need to divide my dividend into one-third pieces. Now remember, when we want to divide a whole number into thirds, we have to remember that one whole equals three-thirds. Therefore, this should be one-third, two-thirds, and then we have three-thirds. Now because I know my multiplication facts, I know three-thirds would be the value of one, two wholes would be six-thirds, three wholes would be nine-thirds, Four holes would be 12 thirds, and five holes would be 15 thirds. And if you're not sure, you can always just place your marks in between to show four thirds, five thirds, six thirds, seven thirds, eight thirds, nine thirds, and so on until you get to 15 thirds. Now, how many pieces does she cut? My model shows that she cuts 15 pieces that are all cut into thirds. 
Therefore, n would equal 15. Number three says, Leah has three muffins. She cuts each muffin into fourths. How many one-fourth muffin pieces does she have? The question says to draw a diagram to represent the problem. Well, that should be easy because we've done this in previous lessons. What we know is this. She has three muffins, so I'm going to go ahead and draw three circles to represent my muffins. Go ahead and do that with me. She cuts each muffin into fourths, so we want to take each of our holes and cut them into fourths. Now, how many one-fourth muffin pieces does she have? You can see right away. One-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths equals a whole. Five-fourths, six-fourths, seven-fourths, eight-fourths. And then we have nine-fourths, ten-fourths, eleven-fourths, twelve-fourths. So how many one-fourth pieces does she have? We know that she has twelve because you can count them up and see that we have twelve. So our equation would be 3 divided by 1 fourth equals 12. And remember, a whole number divided by a fraction will become a larger whole number. Let's take a look at number 4. It says two friends share 1 fourth of a gallon of lemonade equally. Now my words equally and share tell me that we're going to divide, especially because it says what fraction of the gallon of lemonade does each friend get? That tells me we're dividing. But let's see how we're going to write this equation. It says two friends share one-fourth of a gallon. That means that what they're sharing, their dividend, is one-fourth of a gallon. Therefore, we have to put our fraction first because that's what they're sharing. That's the dividend. Now, our divisor tells me how many you're dividing your one-fourth into. We're going to divide it into two equal parts. So we should say one-fourth divided by two would equal n, the value that each one would get. Now, let's draw a diagram to find out. First of all, we want to draw our one-fourth. So go ahead with me, and let's go ahead and write a rectangle. And we're going to cut it into four parts. Now, we want to find out what each friend gets. Now remember, let's just focus on this top corner here because that's really my one-fourth of my whole. But we need to divide our whole into parts. And so we need to cut each of our fourths into halves. We're going to cut each fourth into two parts. So let's go ahead and make cut each of our fourths into halves. Do you see how we did that? <clears throat> now we have eight parts. So let's go back and just focus on my one-fourth because this is really what we have that we have to deal with, this section right here. Ignore the rest of the whole that we do not have. Here's what we're looking at. We're dividing this one-fourth into two parts. So we want to shade in one of those parts because we want to know what fraction that each friend will get. Friend number one, friend number two. So each friend will get this portion. Well, if you look at now back at the whole, of the whole gallon, each one would get one-eighth of the gallon. Therefore, one-fourth divided by two is equal to one-eighth. Remember, we've learned in the past, a fraction divided by a whole number will be a smaller fraction because you're taking your fraction and you're cutting it into smaller pieces, okay? Because you're dividing the fraction into halves. Therefore, your answer should be one-eighth. And we can write the related multiplication problem to prove it. What is one-fourth times one-half? In other words, what's one-half of one-fourth? Well, we can obviously see the value is one-eighth. Now, I'm excited to see what you guys came up with for number five. It says write a story problem to represent three holes divided into half. So go ahead, pause the video, and create your very own word problem to represent three divided by one half. So here's an example that I made. It might be similar to yours. I wrote, Joe made three sandwiches. He cuts each sandwich into halves. How many sandwich halves does he have? And I can easily solve this by writing 3 divided by 1 half is equal to 6 halves. My model would look like this, 3 sandwiches cutting into halves, therefore I have 6 halves. 
Let's move down to number seven now. It says, Spencer has one third of a pound of nuts. He divides the nuts equally into four bags. What fraction of a pound of nuts is in each bag? Notice how it said what fraction of a pound of nuts is in each bag. Therefore, I know the answer needs to be a fraction. So we've learned that a fraction divided by a whole number is equal to a fraction. So our job is to figure out what is in each bag. So let's go ahead and work this one out. I know that he has a third of a pound of nuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a hole and cut it into thirds. Now the next part says he divides the nuts equally into four bags. So I'm gonna take each of my thirds and I'm gonna cut them into fourths. So I'm gonna do one, two, three lines horizontally. And if you look, each of my one-third parts is cut into fourths. So we're taking one-third, dividing it into four parts. Now, remember, we're gonna only focus in on this section right here. And the reason why we're only so focusing on this section is because it says one-third, okay? We're not worried about this amount right here because assume that this is not even a part of the equation because it's just a third of a pound. Here's the whole pound, here's my one third. Now he's gonna divide this one third into four equal parts. So what fraction of a pound of nuts is in each bag? One bag, two bag, three bags, four bags. Therefore we can shade in the one for each bag. Okay, so that would be how much is in each bag. We'll look at now at the whole pound. And the whole pound shows me that it's divided into twelves and one part is shaded in. Therefore, one third divided by four, our value would equal one twelfth. For number eight, I want you to try this one all by yourself and we'll check it together. It says, Huma has three apples. She slices each apple into eighths. How many one eighth apple slices does she have? Your equation should be three apples She's slicing each apple into eighths, so we're going to divide it into eighths. And how many one-eighth apple slices does she have? Go ahead, draw your model, three, dividing each part into one-eighth. And I want you to find out how many one-eighth parts does she have, and we'll check it together. Okay, here's what I did. I drew three apples. I cut each of my apples into eight parts because we're dividing it into one-eighth slices. How many one-eighth apple slices does she have? You should see that your quotient must be a larger number than your dividend because we have made our big pieces into smaller pieces. Therefore, you're going to have more pieces. So if you count it up, I have 8, 16, 24. So you should say she has 24 apple slices. Okay, friends, so go ahead, turn your page to the back side, and I want you to answer questions one and two regarding what our lesson's about, and then I want you to do three through six for our review questions. Don't forget, somewhere at the top of your page, please write down if you're a level one novice, two, apprentice, three, practitioner, or four, are you an expert? And we will check these questions tomorrow in class, and we'll do lots more practice. Have a great night. Bye-bye.